So, <laughs> no video again. <laughs> My camera died literally pretty much right when I was about to be like, thank you for watching, like whole video recorded. <laughs> Um, and then my camera died, and I was like, okay, well, that happens, that's annoying, well, just whatever, you know, plug it in, charge it, all good, turn it on, assuming when it died, the footage would just, you know, cut off when it died, nope, there was no footage whatsoever, all of it was gone, I don't even know how that works, but yeah, so, absolutely no recorded footage for the season two finale, and you guys are all so incredibly nice about my birthday related delay. So I'm hoping you're going to be equally nice about my camera related delay. Because that's, I mean, I guess you could be mean about it too. But please don't. I'm already really upset. But even though I don't have a reaction to give you, I at least wanted to give my review of the episode. Hope that tides you over. I'm so, so sorry. I, I don't know. Okay, so my overall feelings on the episode was that it really needed to be a two-parter. I had talked at length <laughs> about comparing it to Summit and how Summit was pretty remarkable and the fact that a lot happened in that episode, but it all felt well-paced. It felt like everything led into the next thing, the reveals made sense, nothing felt like you were missing something. And then with this one, it was like they had three plot lines they wanted to wrap up. Not just the Justice League on Rimbor, not just Black Beetle's plan to destroy the planet. Also, they threw in a whole bunch of interpersonal plot lines, because this, which also they did in the season one finale as well. Like it was New Year's Eve, they kissed half the, you know, the team all started kissing each other. And it was like, sure, I guess, because they're standing next to each other. Um, and then here, it was like, after Wally's death, which hey oh, Wally dies. Well, Wally dies, but it is a children's superhero show, so I'm giving it like six to eight episodes to figure out if he's actually dead. Because as of right now, he like blew up in a thing of wave of kinetic energy or something, and in superhero speak, that means he's like trapped in the quantum realm or they're gonna go back in time or something's gonna happen, or he's in an alternate dimension. I don't know, but until a significant passage of time, possibly into season four, I don't actually take him as dead. However, he was tragically lost for the time being. And yeah, like the return of the league, a major character dying, the one who wanted to retire, which, oh my gosh. <laughs> In my video, I kept joking that I had not seen anyone want to retire as badly as Wally since the 80s and like every buddy cop film where the like 50 year old is like, ah, this is my last case, then I'm retiring. And then of course their last case is going to be something crazy and they're not going to retire or they're going to get killed. And then yeah, Wally wanted to retire and then he got killed. Never retire. That's what... American capitalism wants to teach you something awful will happen but yeah there was just a lot going on plot wise and it felt like none of them really got the time to hit emotionally for me because then we were just on to the next thing um the animation in this episode was alarming I know it feels like they maybe didn't budget it correctly like they were like oh crap we didn't we forgot we had one more finale episode because a lot of people were looking real sketch like uh, it was like the very much the difference between like serious cinema and like regular cinema I was like who approved this um I mean I guess needs must budget must but it was very distracting for me actually they get out of Rimbor because Connor and McGann think of a better legal strategy than their lawyer who did absolutely nothing like what where did Icon get his license because they taught him literally nothing even the actual tribunal was like do you have anything to offer they were like please hard cash we take Venmo and he was just like I hope justice will prevail sir <laughs> These two teenagers had to come up with an alternate plan to get the Justice League freed. How embarrassing. Hawkman was there in presence, but did not talk, did not say a word, which was weird because they showed him multiple times. And in a 21 minute episode, you're like, if they keep putting the camera, so to speak, on him, this must mean he's important. No, we just saw him a bunch of times. 
nary a line of dialogue, but we saw him several times, which again had gave me questions about the pacing of this episode. I'm like, if this was a two-parter, which it should have been, was he supposed to do something here? Because you keep showing me him, but nothing ever happened with him. Yeah, so that's the Justice League, who then come back at the very, very, very end of the episode and get praised by the entire world for saving them from the Reach, and it made me very angry. Like, I was aghast. How dare Superman fly around while they shoot off fireworks talking about, oh, the Reach is gone, the Reach is gone, we've defeated the Reach. Like, sir, at least get like Green Arrow in a blimp. He actually had to do something. Like, poor Captain Adam was ripping his hair out, and y'all were just arguing with people who just wanted to bri like and i understand oh they made it look like the league was still there but no 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 when it came down to it when they were in moonfall 2 and there's a bunch of natural disasters and everything's chaos who was rescuing people it was <laughs> someone wasn't like hey where's wonder woman which again someone did that little girl was like i thought wonder woman saved the earth and they were like i don't know why they're not here and then it just never got addressed again which also that actually is an overarching season two complaint by the way um, so the audacity to have them flying in at the end and be like, we defeated the Reach. No, absolutely not. Like, it didn't make sense. One, it just made me angry because I was like, that's rude. Two, it didn't make sense because I feel like humanity as a whole seems to have noticed the absence of some of the most prominent Justice League members, or at least very reduced activity, but they're all cheering and saying their names. Like, sure, okay. Uh, Blue Beetle finally managed to kill that guy, or so I thought. Turns out Black Beetle's not dead, which I'm delighted by because my intro, if you'd seen it, was me saying how much I love him, how much I didn't want him to go away, how much I didn't want him to die, and I was actually hoping for a Fast and Furious style character turnaround, and then he would become part of the family. He didn't, but he's not dead and he's, you know, still buff and mean, so all you have to do is stick another scarab on him and then he can come back. And I really hope he does, because I liked him a lot. I threw in um, Connor and McGann scenes I did not enjoy at all, skipped those entirely. Well, I didn't skip them, I watched them obviously, I just mentally check out. Um, Calder and Legan were fighting, and then Legan was like, Ugh, now you trust me? And he's like, I trusted you to take my place in the team. And he was like, thanks. And I was like, is this the time the world's about to explode? Weird that they tried to give Legan some serious like screen time, I think but never made him interesting. <laughs> Which speaking of never making them interesting, Virgil's officially on the team. Obviously this doesn't apply to him. He's super interesting. I love him a lot. The other runaways are apparently leaving the superhero game, which tracks because they were never 100% into it, but disappoints me greatly because I liked them a lot as if I had not made that clear. And then Nightwing is retiring and he's like, oh, I'll get back to that oh, well, Barbara's more than ready to, like, take my place, which, like, take your place as combat trainer, maybe? But Barbara has gotten no shine this season, so I don't care. And it just was really frustrating for me that I was like, how did you guys have this team of runaway heroes, this, like, three-episode arc that they got, which gave all of them a way more distinct personality. We got to see their powers grow and evolve. We got to see their little sense of community, their sense of self, them working with Lex Luthor, them leaving Lex Luthor. Just so much happened in so few episodes with them. And then even now, them coming in at the very end to help defeat the WM weather machine magnet things. And then it's like, oh, Barbara can take my spot on the team. And I'm like, who is she? Like, I know of her as a very prominent DC hero. I know she's a part of the Bat family. I know a lot about her. I know the killing joke, blah, blah, blah. But in this show, if I'd only seen this show, she means nothing to me. So that was greatly disappointing as an overarching thing. Lex Luthor was nominated to replace Ambassador Sang, which... Well, one, Ambassador saying definitely needs to retire because he sucked at his job. <laughs> Truly awful. Like, notes across the board, all of them just downvote. Like, awful. But due to his relationship with the Reach, he, you know, was called, you know, to be fired. He resigned, all of that. But then they're like, yeah, let's replace him with Lex Luthor because he helped save the day from the weather machine magnet things. What? 
he also prominently worked with the Reach. It doesn't matter if he changed his mind. And he flat out admits that the light brought the Reach to Earth in front of Ambassador Zang. And he's like, one, doesn't seem bothered by admitting that to the public. Or I mean, the public here being the ambassador. But you think the head of the UN would be like, y'all, I just heard something crazy. Lex Luthor just flat out said he brought the Reach here. <laughs> Never addressed again. But... The public knows he works with the Reach, even if he turned around to help the world not blow up, which is a very low bar. That's just cleaning up a mess he made. Why would you give him a promotion for that, let alone ambassador to the UN? That's crazy. But that is how Lex historically works. He fails upward if he does fail at all, but... <sighs> Feels like I'm gonna spend a lot of season three equally going, why is everyone so stupid? <laughs> as a whole, as a general assembly, why are they not thinking a little bit more critically? It's very frustrating, especially because like G Gordon weirdly was kind of right about a lot of stuff. And then at the end, he, he even was the one who was like, hey, why are you guys selling the reach juice? Da, 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 da. And then at the very end of the episode, he's like, well, Lex Luthor is going to be promoted to ambassador. Obviously, he's the only one qualified. He saved us. Man, I was just like, does everyone here have the memory of a goldfish on this one? I don't get it. While the Justice League are on Rimbor, they get a video call FaceTime from Vandal Savage saying like, as a spokesperson for the Earth, anyone who tries to invade us or any kind of incursion, you know, will face their doom via the war planets I stole. And okay. Maybe that was like their long-term plan by creating an invasion. They put Earth on the intergalactic stage, but at the same time now have probable cause to be like, oh, we were attacked. Now we can like war in Iraq this and just go after completely unrelated people. Be like, do you remember how they tried to invade Earth? And like, that seems to be the plan. It does feel like if getting the world world was a major aspect of their plan there was like 18 steps and a lot of conveniences to get there because they'd have to know about the world world know who currently has it know that he's enemies with the reach invite the reach get the reach to you know claim earth have that go out publicize that and hope that that would be enough to bring mongol and the world world to earth but what if mongol was like oh i'll get you later how the how would the plan have worked if he just decided to wait like they, I mean I guess they assumed that the head of this giant planet alien thing was not a very patient fellow but you don't know like that there's a lot of assumptions built into that plan that I think we're supposed to just chalk up to the fact that they're all very smart um but weirdly for a show that over explains things sometimes to my chagrin these are the things where I'm like no 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 talk me through this because I have questions <laughs> I don't know how we got from A to Z here there seems like there was a lot of pit stops and after Vandal Savage threatens the galaxy essentially he makes a quick little pit stop at Apocalypse and we see crap I still can't remember his name <laughs> I literally watched watched the episode recorded my reaction and was like, damn, I forgot his name. One of the most prominent figures in all of comic book history, let alone in DC specifically, couldn't remember his freaking name. And now I'm re-recording and I still can't remember his name. And I should Google it because this is embarrassing, honestly, where is my street cred here? But I, I, you know what? Let it live. If I can't remember his name, I'll get it next season. I'm sure he'll be a prominent feature. But that was our kind of big moment. They did this handshake, which I'm a really big fan of in media. I think more people should shake hands like that. Whenever people shake hands like that, I know shit's about to go down. So that is a good sign for season three based on that handshake. The light apparently wants to reuse the reaches, make you all cattle juice um, on the human populace again, presumably to eliminate resistance their attempts to, to basically take over the world that upsets me only because they claimed that their whole thing was about human evolution and humanity evolving through tragedy and all of this other kind of blah 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 and then now they're just like yeah we just want to be like in charge of the planet and be heads of the galaxy and stuff like if if you just want to do world domination Say it with your chest, you know what I mean? Like, don't try to cover it with philosophy about evolution and human advancement. Like, just say, I want to rule the galaxy and me and six of my buddies are gonna try to make that happen. Like, be honest about it. 
Um, yeah, I just, I don't see how their stated goals and their actions uh, meld with each other. Hopefully, I'm like hoping that season three is our like Game of Thrones, like early seasons season, where like I want a lot more summit type episodes. I want people in rooms talking because that is good. It's really good for me. I will give up a lot of fight scenes for people in rooms talking if it's all like smart and engaging and we saw in the last episode that it absolutely can be. So I hope that that's what season three is about. Um, the team, the Young Justice team is now officially working out of the Watchtower with the League because they've been doing their damn jobs all season and it's like congratulations but like yeah. <laughs> We've been doing your jobs. Also, half of us could be in the league if we wanted to be, which they never addressed, I think, in this whole season. Why some of them chose not to be in the league? Why Zatanna and Rocket did? What was the difference? Obviously, the uh, public uh, part of the job changes if you join the league officially. But I mean, even if they just want to say, like, I personally am not comfortable being in the public eye. I like being, you know, below the radar. That just a little one-liner, I think, would have been nice just to give a lot of these characters just that little bit of extra depth. But we did not get that sad face. There was so much in this episode. And again, Wally died. A major character died. And I'm just sitting here going, and then this happened, and then this happened. Like, that should be the thing that you're like, oh my god. We lost, we lost one of the OGs, this is tragic. And I just didn't get even get to feel that for so long because there was just, oh, we're on Apocalypse now. Like, oh, we're in like, it's too much. It should have been a two-parter. This really should have been a two-parter. Escaping Rimbor, defeating Black Beetle, My Hero Academia, World Heroes Mission, which was the plot of this episode. Swally dying. Impulse is officially the new Kid Flash, which is, you know, nice. I like Impulse a lot. Glad he's still around. I hope we get more Impulse and Blue Beetle scenes. People were coupling up. That meant very little to me because I didn't know how half of them were. They were like, oh, Tim and Cassie. And I'm like, who are these people? That means I don't care if they're dating. You guys aren't watching my The Boys videos. I have noticed and I am upset. But if you want to see me absolutely adore a couple, because I do spend a lot of these episodes just slagging off all romantic opportunities. Frenchie and Kimiko. No, that's love. That's love. That's romance. That is, I'm obsessed with them, obsessed. Because um, it seems like I've, I've created a very negative image of my feelings on, on love <laughs> through these videos. I think I've covered uh, most of what I covered in my original recording. I probably have forgotten some smaller details. Please comment below things you liked, didn't like, things you think I missed, and I'm gonna comment back and talk about it because there was so much to talk about in this episode. It was just pretty poorly paced, in my opinion. However, season two, on the whole was pretty freaking good. Um, really good villains, a little over complicated sometimes, yes, but very impactful. Um, we got to see so many, like they got to win over and over. We saw how many battles they won before losing the war that made him feel like a very worthy opponent. Obviously the light is you know, creeping up that threat scale, um, but I, I still feel like I wanna see a bit more of them like I want more summit style scenes actually seeing how they all interact like exactly what part does every member of the light play because a lot of the time it's looking like Vandal and Lex are just killing the game and then the other ones are kind of there like so I would like to get a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time with the light next season and then we're starting season three so thank you guys so much for watching this if you do watch this i'm so sorry again about uh my reaction video i didn't do it but i am sorry but i did really want to talk about this episode because so much absolutely happened in it so i hope you at least enjoyed my uh post to watch reaction the, the post game uh review and recap i will be back next week with season three episode one and uh peace <laughs>